Hi everyone, this is Cheryl Allen and welcome to Cheryl Allen's Empower Yourself. Today uh, I am doing a video on invisible illness and it actually, I plan to film it today and uh, upload it but it actually worked out perfectly because I'm in the middle of a flare attack right now and um, I've had a really rough day. Went to the doctor this morning and then I had to run some errands and I'll go look at some RVs and stuff. And uh, that was just supposed to be a little fun thing my husband and I were gonna do. Um, but I almost passed out out there and, and I couldn't even walk back to the car. And um, I tried to eat, got really sick. And I always know like when I get really dizzy and then the sweating starts, like literally, my hair I had to twist it up um, I, I can't focus on my words. My speech gets all crazy. If, I don't know if you can see, but the sweat, like, it's just, um, it's, I wiped my face off, but it's just rolling down from the top of my head, um, down. And that happens to me really bad when I get a flare up. Um, my kidneys aren't working properly. Um, I had a faulty surgery too, which... Uh, really messed me up. I had a hysterectomy um, a year in, well, almost two years ago now, and um, it was the worst uh, thing. I needed to have it done because I also had a trouble prolapse, stage three prolapse. It was causing me a lot of problems, but um, yeah, my kidneys are not working. So s when they work, I don't do all, all this, you know, where sweat's just pouring out of me. But when your kidneys don't work, you have to lose the um, excess water somewhere. I'm sorry I keep looking over there. I've got my camera backwards, but um, yeah, I, I wanted to talk to you about invisible illness and um, so this is what it looks like or um, the pain that I'm in right now is out of this world. Um, I usually end up having to go curl up in my bed and, um, and I can't move. So that's where I'm going to go after I take a shower and rinse off and cool myself down. Like I have to drink a lot of ice water and cool down the inner core of myself. Um, for years, I'll give you a little backstory. Um, I left him at 14. I'll start all the way at the beginning. It's gonna be a few videos um, to finish it all. But um, I was adopted and the mother that adopted me she was wonderful i couldn't have asked for a sweeter woman my uh, adopted father was very very abusive in every way um just horrible i left home at 14 and um out on my own i had so many struggles um then i started modeling i started making a lot of money um life was good at that point um i didn't have that many health problems um, during that time but now when I look back I can see um, where the start of it was I just um, was young and spunky and um, happy to be out of that horrible situation and making a lot of money and I, I you couldn't tell me anything <laughs> um, but I had a lot of trauma that I had dealt with and it came out I was full of anger and rage and I didn't believe in God at the time and um, you know, I had a lot of spiritual issues going on and the people I was surrounded with um, were all into some, you know, all that really um, big in the metal and death metal scene. And so, of course, I, you know, got involved with all kinds of crazy people. <laughs> but, okay, fast forward some time, I met my husband, my ex-husband got married and um, I started having a lot of pains where I shouldn't. Um, my body has been through a lot. Um, him and I, after our divorce, um, I had some really horrible things happen to me. Um, horrible. And the trauma from the things that happened to me as a child um, and the things that happened to me after my divorce, uh, it just like manifested. And, and I, I found that so many people that have um, autoimmune diseases and invisible illnesses have been through some serious trauma and um, so first I, 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 I mean I was very active I would jog five miles a day come home work out you know I, I, I was just solid muscle like there was no fat on me I, I was energetic I would do 
I mean, everything, get this company up and running and make it a success. And I mean, I was, I was a beast and then still take the kids, put them in the car and take them to a park or a theme park. We were always going to hotels and theme parks and, and all of that. And, um, having, you know, a great time. And I met my biological mom. Um, and I know that opened up a lot of wounds. I thought it was going to be a positive thing, but it ended up being something that's recently torn my heart in a million pieces. I also found out I had a sister. We were so close and, you know, um, things happen, you know, but, um, I do have a brother. I thank God for him. Um, there was a lot of years in my life. I didn't have anybody. I was completely alone. And after that assault, I, I kind of went into a really dark place for some time. Um, I was assaulted so bad. I don't know how I'm alive. Um, I was held captive for several days and I mean, just beaten so bad. I see the scars. People say they can't see them, but I do. So that's the emotional part. So I start feeling bad and going through a lot of health issues. And they kept saying, well, you have fibromyalgia. They just kept throwing that out there at me. But I knew something else was way worse. I, if I told you all the stuff that I go through physically now, you know, it's crazy. So I recently got with a really good doctor and found out I have something called ankylo ankylosing spondylitis. And, um, but he said there's still something else going on. And I got a recent um, lupus diagnosis. So I don't think I ever had fibromyalgia. Um, if, my recommendation is if people say you have that doctor, just keep digging because it could be something way worse going on and they, they just don't know about a lot of these illnesses that are around now. And um, they just throw that out there at you. My father, my real dad, um, he was a police officer and I found him, he had just passed, he was looking for me. He wanted me to know that he was worried he passed me a defective gene. He didn't say anything else besides that, so I don't know what to be tested for, but, um, I'm, you know, I think I have, I'm, I'm not claiming anything else. I have my diagnosis that I am accepting, but that's it. I'm, you can tell me I have this, that I'm not accepting it, but what hurts so bad is when people say these things out of their mouth that, you know, like, oh, you're in the bed again, or you know, you don't look sick or, um, you know, you can't go to a certain thing and they get mad at you. They don't understand that it, it literally takes every ounce of strength you can get up to sometimes get up out of the bed and get yourself a glass of water, let alone go to a function. If somebody you know is struggling with an invisible illness, be kind to that person because you don't know how much they're struggling and you don't know if they're ready to take their life if they are at that point you know do something kind for them don't be mean to them um i've had some mean things said to me and a lot of um a lot of i don't misunderstanding i don't know what the word is to use but i've been treated really badly for being ill and it's crazy how it annoys people like are you kidding me what how do you think I feel do you think I would choose this for myself if I had my way I would be on a beach jogging down the, the beach or swimming I'm a swimmer I have been all my life I'd be in a pool beating the pool down <laughs> you know I taught every kid in the family how to swim and you know, my nephew, he's a Marine and he just recently came back and he saw, he said, I can beat you now, auntie. I know he can, you know, but I would have my, my old life back and my heart breaks for so many people because they're getting treated horribly, you know, oh, there you go in the bed again, or being called lazy or just, it, I mean, it's so sad because these people are suffering so badly. They're in so much pain 
and they barely say to you everything they're going through because they don't want to hear anything negative and then people still say mean things to them you know I mean definitely no one would choose to be sick all the time nobody would choose that you know I mean I can't imagine anyone that would you know, just be supportive reach out call call someone if you know that they're suffering with with any invisible illness just reach out just say hey how are you doing or you know just give them a hug when you see them or you know be kind because you have no idea um, how they're being treated people that don't go through it they don't understand it but your karma is something and I don't wish anything on anyone but it's going to come back around on you I've actually seen it happen and then you're going to understand then because it's going to be you and then you're going to wonder wow how in the world did you suffer through this and and still go to this or still do that or you know if that person doesn't answer your phone call or doesn't go out to lunch with you or you haven't gotten an email from them in a while don't think it's because they haven't thought of you or you know they're they're they don't care about what you're doing or you know I, I've had I've actually had friends like just drop me because I don't answer their call enough or I don't text them enough or um, my kids don't even get my full attention sometimes when I'm in a bad flare-up I get really really sick it doesn't mean I don't love you my friends that I can go 10 years without talking to or two years and we pick up right where we left off and I cherish that so much and people who understand when I can't make it to something you guys if you're watching I thank you so much for um, understanding because I used to go to all the family functions I can't make it to a lot of them I miss a lot of stuff uh, but I cherish, I cherish the people who love and understand and pray for me. Um, I just wanted to put this message out there because you have no idea what one nasty comment can can do to someone. It could, it's, it could be that straw that broke the camel's back. And that person, there's already suffering so bad, you know. You don't know what that person could end up doing. Um, just hurting them hurting them by your words is is bad enough words cut words cut I still can actually hear words that my father well my adoptive father said to me I, I can still hear them you know they, they stick with people and they hurt and they cut you know and what really makes me sick is when somebody you know and you love them so much more than yourself can't understand because you can't make it to something because you're sick. I just recently went through something so traumatic with a family member that I will never be the same again. Like it broke my heart in more pieces than I could ever tell you. And it's all because one, I was sick and two, my stepdaughter has lupus just like me, had to get a kidney transplant. She waited for six years for a kidney and um, a recipient, a donor, I'm sorry, had passed away um, and she got notified right away, get to the OR, because she's got that one rare blood type like I have. Um, so I couldn't make it to this event, which I would have done anything to go to, but I had to be there for my stepdaughter and my husband. It's a very big deal. And I was really, really, really sick on top of it, like really sick. So, you know, they, they're just not even speaking to me now. I'm like, are you kidding me? Really? That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Just don't be hurtful. Like, it already hurts enough. Everything hurts. It's, like I said, the hardest thing I've ever had to go through. And I've missed out on so much of my kids in the last two years. I try to still be that mom and do it all, but holy crap, it's hard sometimes. So I'm just coming to you. This is what I look like when I'm in a mess. I looked worse. I 
I wiped my face off so much like today just I've just been sweating and sweating and sweating and um yeah it's, it's been a rough day <laughs> but I just wanted to come to you raw and real and me this is me on a bad day and um this is why I haven't been filming as many videos lately because I've been in a terrible flare-up and it just takes every ounce of energy that I have left once I get done with my responsibilities to fix my face up and put it on a smile and open a box, <laughs> you know. Um, my friend has been working with me. She's a nutritionist and she healed herself from Hashimoto's. I'm reading a book called The Medical Medium. I highly, highly recommend that anyone suffering from any invisible illness read this book. Um, I'm going to be doing another video soon and I'm going to let you know about my friend and give you her information. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in working with her, she has, she, out of the goodness of her heart, she sent me all of these supplements and it's been helping. Um, I've changed my eating habits and everything, everything's helping. Literally before I had my hysterectomy, my kids were so mad at me because I was so skinny. Like I was too skinny. They just kept saying, and I have more weight on me now than when I was nine months pregnant with my, my last child, you know? So, um, I've put on so much weight and, and I know it's from, from, you know, my health issues and everything. So, but I, the weight's starting to come off and I'm not even really worried about it like that right now. I just want to get healthy again. Like my arm, I can't lift my arm above here. It's like my, um, my socket and joint is so inflamed. I can't, I can't lift this arm up any higher than this. It hurts so bad. Um, I can't even lift a milk jug out of the refrigerator right now. It hurts so bad. Um, so yeah. Um, I love you guys. <laughs> you know, I'm a positive person and um, I know God's gonna heal me. I already know that. Um, I know there's this law of attraction thing and all. I don't believe in that. Um, the way it's putting, being put out there. I mean, it's the basic principle of it that I agree with, with the Lord and faith. Um, but we'll get into that in another video. Um, but I already know he's going to heal me. I, I already thank him for it. And it's going to be my testimony because there's so much other stuff I've been through that I fought through and I came out the other end. I am a warrior. <laughs> I am a warrior. Um, if you only knew what I have battled and overcome. So this too, with the Lord's help, I am going to fight like hell and I'm going to win. But I just also want to give you a message to any of you that are suffering like me. You are not alone. You are loved. We have a father, a real father who loves us. Every hair on your head. And sometimes when I feel alone and I feel inconsolable, I picture myself in his arms being held and it comforts me. Um, I'm not pushing my beliefs on you at all. I used to be an atheist and um, I would get angry <laughs> if I had to hear about that, you know, God or anything. Um, so I'm not trying to push my beliefs on you. Um, but I also want you to know if, if you don't believe, that's fine. I'm here and I love you. I mean that. I love each and every one of you because you're my brothers and sisters. And you are not alone. You can reach out to me. Just know I'm suffering right by you. We don't have to be together. But I'm here for you. And you know you can show this video to anyone that doesn't understand. Um, that maybe says mean things to you. Or it doesn't even have to be mean. But it hurts. You know. A crack about being in the bed all the time. Or you know, a crack about anything dealing with, with your illness, you know, hurts so much. And the only time you should look down on someone is when you're lifting them up, you know? Um, 
don't mistreat people. Don't, please don't mistreat anyone suffering with an illness. You know, they may look fine. They, they may look fine and you can't see that there's anything wrong with them. And maybe the doctors can't even find anything wrong with them. But if someone says something to you, believe them, believe them. Because that's a big issue too. A lot of people, nobody believes them. They're doing it for attention or they want sympathy or no, no, something's going on and help them get to the bottom of it. You know, um, I, like I said, I'm here. I love you guys. Um, if you have not subscribed, I, I would appreciate it if you do. Um, and of course, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know if you'd like me to make more videos on this topic. Um, comment down below if you would like. Like I said, I'm always here for you. I, I want to empower not just women, but other men. You know, I've heard so many stories from so many women because I'm always coming across them. I volunteer at the jail and, um, you know, there's always women that reach out to me that it, it breaks my heart, their stories, you know. Um, I was born and put on this earth to be there for others suffering. Everything I went through, I wouldn't change a single second of it because it gave me the understanding of how someone else is feeling. And then I'm also an empath. So I feel, I literally feel your pain. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know um, that you are not alone and give you, if you're not dealing with it, give you a little bit of insight on invisible illnesses and how they affect people and maybe where they come from and why someone can be healthy one day and sick another. You know, sometimes it comes from childhood. It's something that you've been storing in for so long and then it just manifests or it could be an allergy to something you've been eating for so long or mold in your house that, you know, so many things that can start it. And um, also like if you've had any plastic surgery, if you have breast implants, that is a huge um, number of women who are coming down with Lyme disease, uh, lupus, all kinds of autoimmune diseases from the silicone, even if they have saline implants, um, just the silicone shell, it's called breast implant illness. And if you've never heard of it, um, there's a Facebook group um, that you can join and you can learn so much information. Um, a lot, a lot of women, that's where it started and that's where the cure lies. Um, it's just so many, so many different um, places it could have come from, but it, it all feels the same. And again, I love you guys. I'm here for you. Um, reach out, reach out. You're not alone, okay? I love you and I'm wishing you all a peaceful, pain-free, just gorgeous, gorgeous, namaste night, okay? I love you.